Hello. In part one of this video, we were working on some Philips portable VR2220 V2000 format video recorders. And we had something that was basically working, but we had some problems with the color performance and it still needed some work and reassembly. So uh, let's get stuck in and see if we can finish it. Okay, we have this problem with this chroma noise and there's several things, several approaches I could try. So it didn't improve when I put the uh, cabinet work back on here. There could be a problem with this board at the back here, which does the RF processing, but there's also a board underneath, which does most of the video processing. And that one, I think, is relatively easy to change. So we could give that a spin. But one thing I'd like to try first is to see if it's not a fault at all. It might be that if I just connect it up through a digital time-based corrector that the signal will clean up. So, the SCART lead that goes into the back of this, I'm going to patch that into one of my time-based correctors. I'm going to use a SCART breakout cable and one of my time-based correctors. I'm going to feature these a little bit more in the future, I think. But uh, I'm going to put that between the tuner timer and the TV to see if it cleans up the picture. It probably won't, but it's worth a try. Okay, we have the time-based corrector connected to the TV. Now that's such a grainy image I can't tell, so let's uh, try to find a cleaner picture than that. Again, that's slightly grainy, but looks okay in terms of chroma. Let's put the other tape in. When I press bypass, it does seem to get worse. Let me press still. I'm going to zoom you in on the screen. So that's with the time base corrector in and that's with it in bypass. There does seem to be more noise in bypass. Is that acceptable? For V2000 it probably is. I think that's probably normal. Just looking at the image here I've got this colour saturation turned down and the amount of noise on that picture I would say is correct for V2000. And I put the colour up to normal. There's a certain amount of chroma noise, but is it acceptable? Hard to say. But if I wind the colour up to a ridiculously large amount, of course there's loads of chroma noise. But I wonder if we can reduce that some more. So I think we're going to try changing the uh, video processing board on this machine. So let's switch it off for a moment. Looking at the schematics, there were two versions of this machine. One has a video processing board A333 and the other has a video processing board, board A320. And they certainly wouldn't be compatible, I believe, because they're mechanically different. So let's turn the machine over and see which one applies to our machine. Right, I think this is the A320 variant of panel, just because of the layout. But let's have a look. Okay. It's uh disconnect the connections on this color processing board. Okay, just four multi-way connectors to undo. This includes a delay line. You can see that this is chroma. Oh, there's a bodge board there. Okay, let's have a look and see another bodge board if we can uh, swap this out with one from another machine. Right, here's our other one. This seems to have only one of the two bodge boards. So 
So this is what's come out and this is what's going in. So for whatever reason that uh, bodge board there is not installed here. That may or may not be a good thing. Looking at it, the date code on the IC under this bodge board here I think is older. It's 223 which I think is 82 whereas this one is 83 so maybe this one without the bodge board the second bodge board is the newer one. Yes, the date code on the daily line looks newer as well so maybe this is a newer board. Let's install those four connectors and uh, see where we are. This screening can is a real pig to refit. Okay, I'll refit the rest of the earthing connections between the top and bottom uh, once I've tested that it basically works. All right, let's hope uh, no harm has come to it. I don't seem to have a picture. Oh, that's not good, is it? Oh, that's not good at all. Refit the other board. So either I've fitted the board badly, or it's incompatible, or it's defective. Let me just check that uh, it's not something I've done first. No, I think I fitted all those connectors properly. Back to its own board. Just for a moment, I'm just going to try it as is without the screening cans. Well, we have our picture back at least. Oh, what do you think? Should I try to refit it one more time in case something went wrong last time? I suppose I could. One more try with the newer board because it just seems a bit unlikely that it would be defective. All right, one more try just to prove that the board was a fault. Indeed, the board is a fault. Okay, one more quick check. Okay, we'll um, have to settle for that, I think. So I'm going to do a full reassemble of this machine and we're just going to have to live with the way it is because I'm not going to fit, I'm not going to strip down another machine potentially trash another machine when we're chasing a bit of noise which may be within spec anyway so I think we're going to have to stop there um, but there's still more I need to do anyway in the tuner timer so I'll come to that shortly let's uh, reassemble this okay when reassembling it uh, a spring fell out and I was a bit perturbed because I didn't know where that had come from but it appears to be looking at our donor machine here we've got a big soft spring going between these two components of the deck. Exactly what it does I don't know but it's clearly supposed to be there it's got a lump of red sort of sealant at this end and we are missing that spring here. Ah, It's something to do with this guide. There's a guide here that's loose let me show you. I think it's something to do with this guide here. The back arm of that is supposed to be connected to here. So this um, this guide here is now all loose. 
and the one on our donor machine is connected via the spring so we need to uh, refit that spring on here I'm going to fit the uh, bottom case for my donor machine since there's a uh, cosmetic damage on the original case, uh, including a bit that's snapped off here. So uh, let's remove the rear PCB from the donor machine. Just looking at rear PCB, you can see they've used a lot of these thin film circuits on here to really attempt to uh, reduce the uh, weight and uh, bulk of the machine compared to earlier generations. Also the uh, top cabinet is coming in from the donor machine. Refitting the um, top of the cassette housing is uh, surprisingly fiddly. The, uh, there are some tangs on the top plastic piece that need to slot in between two pieces of metal here. So that's all quite fiddly. Let's see if I've managed to assemble it properly. Went down with a little bit of a thump. Down again. Mm, bit of a thump, but it's working. And then tape in. And eject. And then to get the tape out, you need to have to push, and then it comes out. Slightly strange latching mechanism thing going on there. Okay, let's uh, have a quick look at the picture again. All right, that's a bit of a grainy tape, but that's uh, playing fine. Right, there's something else I want to do before we finish. Um, oh, by the way, I'm not completely ruling out the possibility of swapping over some more panels from another machine into this, but right now, I, I think we're gonna call this a working machine. Anybody who saw that would say that that video recorder is working properly. So there's something else I want to do. Do you remember when we were looking at the tuner timer, there's a battery in there and that's made up of three cells. Let me get it out and show you. Okay, here's the front of the tuner timer and there's a backup battery. And this type of battery was used a lot in Philips equipment. And what it consists of is three of these, uh, one third AA tagged NICADs to give in this case 3.6 volts and this type of cell was used in ones twos and threes in a whole variety of Philips equipment of the vintage they're still available but they're a bit expensive uh, <laughs> I wasn't too keen on buying those at the price they are these days so I may have come up with a better solution I've bought these these are not tagged they're one third triple a rechargeable batteries so three of those in a set would make up this but they're not tagged. And my logic is, well, if they're one third AAA batteries, all I need is a AAA holder and I should be able to stack three of those and that should fit nicely into that space. So let's see if that works. I have one spare. So can I stack three one third AAAs in a AAA holder? Uh, certainly going to be a tight fit. Seemed like a good idea. I think I'm going to have to uh, file the tops down a little bit. Well, that worked after a fashion, but I think if you were to use three AAA batteries like that, you'd be better off with a AA size holder because the AAA really was too tight. I think they're one third in body length, not in the uh, total length. But we have uh, 3.6, 3.7 volts on the battery pack, so we can now solder it in place there. Right, I think that's uh, a pretty good repair to that. That battery will uh, last a very long time.
Okay, exactly how I set the clock, I'm not sure at the moment. I'll just check everything's still working first. Yep, picture and sound all working. Unusually, you get fast sound when you select fast on here, which most video recorders don't do. Though it is selectable on some Panasonic SuperVHS ones. Good. Let's see if we can set this clock. Set clock, and then fast and slow on here. I've got an out of clock set, set clock mode. Ah, press the end button. OK, now we'll uh, power it down. And wait a moment. And power it up and see, see if we still have the clock set. Well, it's flashing. But it does have the correct time, so it's telling you there's been a power cut. Don't know how to get out of that. Okay, well, that's working. That is really working. I'm quite pleased with that. Result. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching this Philips VR2220 portable V2000 format uh, video recorder uh, brought back into working order. I'll do plenty more interesting uh, content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now. <laughs>